Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Fine Art, and I help beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering the art of animal art. So we just got back from a wonderful trip to Pennsylvania to visit family, and while we were down there, we made a point of visiting the zoo. This is Anna Grace's first experience at the zoo, and of course, I was in heaven taking reference photos for future paintings and just soaking up the beautiful sunshine and seeing some animals that I would never see normally. And we just had such a great time. But in this tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching you how to draw and paint a squirrel. If you'd like to bypass the drawing section, I have a traceable outline down below. But without further ado, let's get started. I find it a lot easier to start with the main shapes for the drawing. I see three shapes in this squirrel. A circle for the lower part of the body, an oval for the middle part of the body, and then a smaller oval for the head. We're going to be overlapping these shapes and applying very little pressure to our pencils. These shapes are going from a large circle to kind of a medium sized oval to an even smaller oval for the head. Now aside from that tail, we've just laid down the largest shapes within our squirrel. So let's move on to the smaller ones starting with those arms. Directly below the head and connecting to that oval that we made for the middle part of the body, I'm going to create a smaller oval for the arms. Now it's time to connect those shapes. Starting with the top of the head, I'm going to work my way down and around to the lower part of the squirrel's body. Now we're not going to do a whole lot with the very bottom of the squirrel. So I'm bringing that back line down and then part of an open circle for that back leg. It comes straight down, so we're going to cover up the bottom part of the squirrel. So let's work on that little snout. I'm making a smaller circle right above the arms for the snout and then open triangles for the ears. So these ears are really close together. So I'm gonna make two open triangles, one a little bit bigger in the front and then a tiny one in the back. Now we only see a little bit of that back arm and that back leg. So I'm just gonna create shapes that look like those front leg and arms just along the side of it. So it only comes out just a tiny little bit. No need to make these curved lines that I'm making at the bottom unless you want to. My original plan was to make these red and orange fall leaves that I was sitting on. But then I came up with the cotton plant idea. So now I'm gonna work on the squirrel's tail. So this is interesting. We're going to just start out with the line that creates this long bushy tail. And then coming out from that line, I'm going to create the width and the fuzziness. I don't want to push down too hard here because we're going to create those strands of fur with our paintbrush. I just want the placement of the tail. Great, so we have all our large and small shapes down. Let's work on the details. I want to create a defined line, kind of curved, for that jawline. And this can help us place the eyes. So if you notice the distance between the ears and the snout, right in the center of there is going to be where we place the eyes. Now don't press too hard because we might have to adjust this. So in order to help us figure out if this is right, we can kind of make adjustments in other places. Or if we know right off the bat that it's up too high or too low, we can pull out our erasers and erase that and try again. What I love so much about this drawing is that tiny little nose. We're going to make a nostril just with a curved line at the top of our snout. And let's make sure we define those ears. So I mentioned we were making two triangles. The one closest to us is a larger one and it's open, cutting into that head. And then we see tiny little bit of a corner of the other ear on the other side. So I'm starting to apply a little bit more pressure to my pencil 
because I want to know exactly where those lines are that I want to keep. Now the lines that we don't want are the initial shape lines that we made at the beginning of our drawing. So we're going to erase that. I still see some in the center of the squirrel and around the lower body. And of course, make adjustments where you need to for your own drawing. It's going to look a little different than mine. It, it's going to look similar, but it may need some adjustments that I don't need to put in my own drawing. So here until the end of the drawing portion, follow along to the changes that I make. But step back and look at your own drawing and see where things need to be changed or altered or just left alone. Something I noticed that made a huge difference in my drawing was bringing the ears up a little bit. I brought them in a little bit closer to the top of the head, and I also made them more pointy. These ears are triangular, but they come to a definite point at the top. Another thing that I noticed was we see just a tiny little bit of that back hand. So I'm just going to extend out a separate line that's just showing that the squirrel's holding something. All right, guys, get your paints out. It's time to start painting. Using a large flat brush, I'm gonna mix titanium white with aqua green. That's titanium white with aqua green, and I'm just gonna paint the background around our squirrel sketch. Now this is important, so make sure you're listening. The bottom part of the squirrel, I leave white because if you were following along to the drawing section, I was going to make these fall leaves that the squirrel was sitting on. So since we're not doing that and we're making cotton plants all around the background, just paint the entire bottom part of the squirrel. So down around the bottom of the squirrel, around the tail, and around the front uh, where the feet are, we're gonna be painting this color in that area.
Now it's time to grab a small or medium flat brush and the colors I'm going to mix next are raw sienna, crimson red, and a tiny bit of black. So that's raw sienna, a little bit of crimson red, and even smaller amount of our black. And as we always do with our acrylics, layering from dark to light, we're going to be applying and pinpointing those darkest areas in a reference photo. So that is along the tail, the legs, on the bottom of the arms and hands, and right below the jawline. These are the areas that we're going to be placing our dark tones. A technique that I teach a lot in my online Anmark Masterclass is wet into wet. This is a technique where we're just applying wet paint to already applied wet paint. So it's important that you keep your paint palette damp using a spray bottle or just staying at a pace where you aren't allowing this paint to dry completely so that we can add in more of the lighter tones into the previously used paint. So we just layer from dark to light, oftentimes just adding in light tones to the paint mixture we were just using. Just like now, I'm applying orange into my raw sienna mixture that we made at the beginning, and I'm also going to pull in some more raw sienna. And now we're working up towards our medium tones, areas that are just a tiny bit lighter. So that's going to be along the squirrel's back, a little bit on the squirrel's head, and the lower leg. If you'd like to learn more about these dark, medium, and light tones that I'm talking about, I have an online Anmark Masterclass designed for creatives of all levels to help you reduce stress while mastering anim art. We learn how to paint pets and wildlife from all over the world using primarily acrylic paint. I have also recently added a new class tier that is just mini canvas paintings, something a little bit more laid back and beginner level if you're a little bit intimidated by the larger acrylic paintings. You are always welcome to give it a try for a month, especially if you become a VIP, you get a 10% off discount code. So guys, if this is something that would bless you or a friend, make sure you check out the links down below. My main focus and concern for the beginning layers is to number one, just place down color to cover up the white that we have left over. Number two, to make sure I don't leave any little white spots where the this part of the painting connects with the background. And number three, to loosely apply brush strokes so that we're covering more surface area. I'm not really concerned about filling in detail. I'm just concerned about placing down color. I'm going to move to a round detail brush to get into those little areas on the face. I'm going to mix up the colors white with a little bit of black. I'm going to pull in the previous colors that we were just using for the last step. And I'm going to pull in yellow ochre and a little bit of raw sienna. I know there was a lot. I'm going to say it again. White with a little bit of black, pulling in some of the color we were just using for the last step and yellow ochre with raw sienna. This is a very interesting looking color, but I wanted to create kind of like colors that we'd see in a fall leaf. So I'm pulling in reds and oranges and yellows, even a little bit of a green tone into our squirrel. Now into that color, I'm gonna pull in some white and fill in the snout and lower part of the squirrel's jaw. 
there's just a little bit of a highlight just around that area and I'm leaving a little bit of a white outline because I want to add a lighter tone of kind of an orangish tone color to that part of the squirrel. Next, I'm just gonna grab black. And if you watch closely, I'm not filling in all of that eye and I'm just dabbing a little bit for the nostrils. Around that eye, we see kind of a highlight around that eye and I wanna leave just a tiny border so that I can go in with a lighter color once that black has dried. Now take these next few steps at your pace because there's a lot of colors that we're gonna be mixing. I'm gonna use black in with a little bit of that orangish red mixture to apply this darkness to the top of the ears where it becomes kind of a point. I'm gonna wash up my brush and apply a lot more raw sienna into that mixture. So primarily raw sienna with a tiny bit of that darkness and fill in the ears. Now listen carefully because there's a few steps I do here that you don't need to do. For instance, this whiteness right here along the ear, we're gonna be covering that up with an orange raw sienna mixture that I just made. So mix up orange with raw sienna, primarily orange, so that we can paint along that jawline and the arms. All right, so with this leftover paint that we have on our brush, I'm gonna mix up white with a little bit of this raw sienna orange mixture and very carefully fill in that border around the eye. Our black should be dry by now and we can carefully just fill that in around that black eye. All right, let's pull back in a little bit of our dark tones because we added a few too many light tones. So red, that's crimson red with raw sienna, is our next color. That's crimson red and raw sienna. And I'm gonna apply this reddish tone to the forehead along the jawline where it connects with the arms and a little bit, as you can see here, right in front of that snout. wash up my brush and mix up the colors white with raw sienna. That's white with raw sienna. I'm going to use this color to fill in that back arm and the back leg. Now we're in our medium to light tones. I washed out my brush and I'm just pulling some orange and I'm applying those highlights that we see along the leg, along the back of the neck, around the jawline and around the arms and the snout. Now again, take your time with the pace of the color mixing here. I throw at you a few colors but we're gonna mix crimson red, raw sienna, yellow ochre, black, and white. I'll say that again. So that's crimson red, raw sienna, yellow ochre, a little bit of black, and a good amount of white. I actually don't add enough white in this mixture here. Now listen carefully. I added a little bit more black to the lower left-hand side of the squirrel's back. I add in actually less black and more crimson red along the white area left on the leg. And so the center of that is gonna be more white. I'll say that again. I add a little bit more black to that mixture for the lower left-hand side of the squirrel and then more crimson red 
to this area right here along the leg. And then right where we started, there was a little bit more white in that mixture. And to cover up the very little bit of white that we have left over, I'm gonna use crimson red and orange. That's crimson red and orange, and that really pulls this all together. I'm gonna fill in the rest of the white beneath that arm and on the top of the leg in with this orange. Now, if your paint mixture on your paint palette has dried here, all you need to mix is crimson red with a tiny bit of black. Crimson red with a tiny bit of black to really add contrast to the arms. All right, I'm gonna wash on my brush and just add straight black to the open area of the mouth. We just see the corner of it. I'm gonna wash up my brush again and pull in just some raw sienna with orange. That's raw sienna with orange. And I'm just gonna outline those highlights around the front ear, not the back ear, just the front ear. Now the other place I'm gonna add this color is the top of the head and behind the ears. Now again, we're gonna go back to our reds. I'm gonna mix up orange with crimson red and a little bit of cadmium yellow this time. So that's crimson red, orange, and a little bit of cadmium yellow. And let's just really pull out those reds along the squirrel's back and the lower leg and the arms. I'm just joining all these colors together. They go together so well. Now, as I applied that to the lower part of the leg, I'm gonna pull in just a tiny bit of black using what's left over on my brush to kind of blend it in. On the lower part of that bottom leg, I'm just gonna fill in this reddish black tone just to add more contrast to the leg now. And we're not done with that color because into it we're gonna add some yellow ochre and a little bit of white and we're just gonna create this shadow in between the arms, the lower part of the arms, and the legs. Now into that color, I'm gonna add in just titanium white, and we're just gonna really pull out those highlights that maybe we went over too much with our oranges and reds. There are some highlights that are on the back leg, on the front leg, and even along the top of the snout. Talk about colors here, right? We are adding so many different variations of fall colors into this squirrel. We're not done yet. <laughs> We're gonna move on to crimson red, yellow, and a little bit of orange. I did that really fast. That's crimson red, a little bit of yellow, and some orange. And we're gonna be adding highlights again, but this time to the arms, the back of the neck, and the middle to lower part of the squirrel. Yay, we're finally moving on to that bushy tail. I'm gonna mix orange with crimson red. That's orange with crimson red with my round detail brush. I'm gonna fill in just the top part where it kind of leads into that initial dark tone that we made. We're focusing on applying color, but also creating the large width, the thickness of the tail. So into that color, I'm gonna mix black with a little bit of crimson red. So it's a dark tone here. On the back of the squirrel's tail, I'm gonna be covering over a lot of that white, but also doing individual strands of fur. There is just kind of spotty little strands of fur in the back of the tail, but then as we move up towards the tail, those strands get a little shorter and then get much longer on the outer part of the tail. 
So keep your paint here thin and also mix it into the very lower part of the tail where it connects a little bit to the body. We want that to be real dark, but then once the start of the squirrel's back, that area is much lighter. If you're having trouble with your round detail brush, I find it a lot easier to use a small flat brush. A smaller medium flat brush will do ya. And I'm gonna mix in some more orange into that crimson and red orange mixture. We actually want a lot of these colors to mix in right now because we're just applying the dark tones. And I'm kind of wisping my brush back and forth to create, using the edge of my flat brush to create those strands of fur while also filling in those dark to medium tones. Now wash out your brush and while we let that tail dry so we can add the highlights, we're gonna mix up purple. So using phthalo cyan and blue and crimson red, I'm gonna mix up, add some white into that to create a medium to dark purple. See how there's a little tint of purple to the lower part of the squirrel's body? We're gonna kind of match that tone to that area so that we can add those distorted colors that I like to add to my animals. So again, that was phthalo cyan and blue with crimson red and some white. And I'm gonna pull in some purples now into our squirrel. Now let's use the edge of our flat brush again to create first strands in purple on the tail. So in between where we joined that brownish red to that orange, I'm gonna be applying this purple in between there. Now the complement of purple is yellow, so a great way to lighten up purple without muddying it up is by adding that complement of yellow. So I pulled in some yellow and I applied that to the tail. I wanna make sure all those little spots of white are covered up. We can also add this yellow around the jawline where we see some of those highlights. Let's also add these highlights to the top of the lower leg. Hooray, we are done with our squirrel and now we can move on to our beautiful background with our cotton plants. Now, if you already haven't, make sure that you fill in the bottom part of this painting with your aqua green and white mixture. I had mentioned to do that earlier because my plan changed from doing fall leaves at the bottom to cotton plants all around. And so right now I'm just gonna fill that in also along the sides of my canvas. But if you've already done this, you can fast forward, skip ahead and start working on your cotton plants. Going back to my round detail brush, I'm gonna mix raw sienna with black. That's raw sienna and black. Now, if you listen here and watch me before you try it, I'll show you how I painted each one. So I created the arms of the cotton plant, and then I washed on my brush and mixed up yellow ochre with white. That's yellow ochre with white. And I filled in the cotton plant within those arms. Now, some important notes as you're painting these, I like to make the cotton plants kind of look like they're falling out of the arms by having some just look really poofy as if there's just actual cotton coming out of there. So some parts are going to be elevated, some parts are going to be folding over top the arms. And I'm also going to add this cotton to inside the hands of the squirrel. So on the top of the hands and on the bottom, just as if it's putting some cotton in its mouth so that it can make a nest for its little ones. So I'm gonna go back and forth to my raw sienna and black mixture to create the stem and the branch. And I'm then gonna wash up my brush to go back to that color with the white and the yellow ochre. Now when you're all done with the cotton plants, and especially when they're pretty much dry or tacky, we're gonna apply just white to the top of those cotton plants to really add some dimension to them to make those highlights on each one. 
Like I always do with all my tutorials, I give you the techniques and the methods, and now it's your chance to make it your own. So taking what you've learned from this tutorial and how to make these cotton plants, try and apply your own cotton plants in the areas maybe different from mine. Add as many or as few as you'd like. Have some overlapping the squirrel or some right next to it. Maybe add in different colors to the cotton or just add some without cotton. So take this time to really just make it your unique painting.
All right, so now it's time to add some highlights to the tops of our cotton plants. Each one is just gonna be highlighted with straight white on the very top of the cotton. Now once you've added all your cotton plants and you're happy with it, wash out your brush and grab some titanium white and just add a little dab of white paint, the highlight, to the top of the squirrel's eye. Now guys, if you have any questions on this tutorial, you can leave them in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed this and you'd like more animal painting tips and techniques and tutorials, make sure you subscribe. And if you'd like to get 10% off my online Inmart Masterclass, just simply join my VIP rewards group down below. It's linked down below for you. But guys, happy fall. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.